It is St. Patrick's Day weekend, and I want to wish you all a happy holiday. For those that don't know me, you can call me E. I have an extreme passion for monsters, and I hope my videos help you with your problems as much as making them helps me with mine. So thanks for taking the time to join us on this great adventure. With that said, let's get to the story, and do we have a good one today? Hi, and welcome to this new special episode of the Cryptic Conclave. Today, we'll be talking about none other than leprechauns. I personally love to research monsters, and I found leprechauns to be quite elusive. Leprechauns are deeply rooted in Irish mythology and folklore. The specific time in which the legend originated dates to before the 8th century, and they were part of a group called the Thuatha Di Danann, an immensely powerful conclave of divine beings part of Irish mythology. The term leprechaun originated from the word lucorpan, which translate to small body, and is a keen representation of what these creatures are. Leprechauns are usually depicted as cobblers, not the tasty pie, but the shoemaker profession, and this is said to account for their vast amounts of wealth, and here we thought making YouTube content was the secret. As part of the lore of these elusive creatures, it is commonly known that they like to hide their pots of gold at the end of rainbows, and it is said in legends that this rainbow serves as a bridge for them to reach their goal. This also gave rise to the mythos that a rainbow is a sign of good fortune, but as we explore further into the scripted world of the fae or fairies, we might learn otherwise. There are many tales about leprechauns and many have been interpreted and adapted to fit the current societal needs. However, one common thing amongst all the stories is the fact that legends say that if you ever catch a leprechaun, they must grant you three wishes in exchange for their release, or they must lead you to their pot of gold. Just remember that deals with beings you don't understand can be tricky and dangerous, like making a deal with the devil. There are fine prints and technicalities that, if overlooked, can be quite catastrophic, as you will see shortly. This serves as a reminder of the phrase often used by people, the devils in the details. Originally, leprechauns were depicted as wearing red, but in accordance with the theme of green that the Irish culture evokes, combined with the celebrations of St. Patrick's Day, they have seen evolved to wear green suits and hats, and are strongly associated with the clover symbol, which is universally known to be a symbol of good luck. However, it is in the urban legends we hear that four-leaf clovers are the ones that are good luck, so not everything is always as it seems. Leprechauns are part of a category known as Fey or Ishi, pronounced Ishi but written A-O-S-S-I, are considered people of the mounds, which is a term used to broadly describe magical fairy-like creatures in the Basque Celtic mythology, and they are the remnants of a once powerful Thuata de Danan. All over Ireland, there are burial mounds. Have you ever seen them? It is said that this is used by the fairies as the entrance to the other world, and it makes clear to us why the term is linked to leprechauns. Fairies, or in this case leprechauns, are capricious in nature, and while many reports vary, they can be both benevolent and malevolent as the need arises. Other creatures we might encounter in this group include monsters like the banshees, pukas, and selkies, but we will cover those at a later point in another video. Leprechauns are indeed old and small, but lore has it that they possess immense magical powers. When they are mostly of neutral nature, they can be malevolent to bad humans, and they are also quite protective of their gold. It reminds us of the phrases we often hear and laugh about, like, That's me gold! One powerful legend has it that a man named Finn once found a leprechaun. But you're not going to believe what happens next. Remember, in the world of the cryptic, things are not always as they seem. Finn was an arrogant young man that lived in a quaint little village on the edge of a forest. He was tired of being poor and having no hopes. He set out on an adventure to see if he could find his luck elsewhere. As Finn was walking away from his village in despair, he stumbled upon quite a sight. Finn was stunned, for he had found a leprechaun. To this delight, this one was strapped under a fallen timber. The leprechaun promised and pleaded to Finn to please come to his aid, and Finn, knowing full well all the details of leprechaun lore, with a greedy thought, agreed to help a poor fae in distress. But Finn figured, but well, why just help him? Instead, we could use his three witches to turn the lock around. The leprechaun asked him to just help him, but as Finn insisted on three witches, the leprechaun reluctantly and with a smirk agreed. Finn's witches were simple. He wanted wealth, the most any man ever had. 
He wanted a long life of being admired, and he wanted the power and respect to be his. With a flick of the wrist, the leprechaun granted Finn's wishes. What Finn did not notice in his stupor of greed and ambition was that the leprechaun was different. Finn rushed, running as fast as he could back to his village, the thoughts of wealth filling his mind and body with adrenaline. But when he arrived, what he found shocked him to his core. His entire village, all the buildings, the people, even his family had been turned into gold. With the passage of time, Finn's greed grew stronger, and as new residents arrived to admire the golden town, he became a powerful figure indeed. He was respected and feared, but he was not loved. He lived long indeed, he saw generations and empires come and go, and one day, as his house and self-proclaimed king's throne, he was transformed into a statue. From that moment on, he was admired by all that came to see him, for as time and eons passed, the legend said that the statue of Fiend could hear and see humans, but he could never speak, and it was creepy, but because it was a historical monument, they would keep it protected for all eternity. In the end, Finn sat for all eternity, knowing the horrible choices that he had made when he chose to make three wishes. He realized that no matter how bad his life was, it could have been worse, and the best thing would have been to be benevolent and to help the creature in need, and to be grateful for what he had, because often our greatest possessions are those we already have. Thanks for watching this episode on Leprechauns. I hope you have learned something new, and if so, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel, and be part of our mission to reach 1,000 subscribers. This is E for Cryptic Conclave, wishing you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Be safe.